Welcome everybody to the second episode of If Objectual Contestants Were Charged For Their Crimes, the series where I'll explore the crimes of various contestants. Before we start, I'd like to remind you all to subscribe with notifications on, as it will be much appreciated. Contestant 2, Fiery from BFDI In the first episode, Fiery and Koini get into a fight hitting each other over and over again and likely causing both of them to get very sore by the end. In the second episode, he hits Coiny again, this time to knock the copper currency off of a ski lift. As you may know, Fiery is a literal fire, and Ice Cube is an Ice Cube, so you wouldn't expect them to mix, and you would be right. In BFDI 8, when Fiery finishes his leg of the relay race so she can go next, he accidentally melts her, killing her in the process. Oh, would you look at that! More coiny and Fiery slapping! What's more, it costs his 13 to lose! Ha! Consequences for his actions, even though he was the second one safe. BFDI 11 starts off with even more coiny and Fiery slapping, this time as a result of Coiny laughing at Fiery getting birthed on. His igniting bomby doesn't count since it isn't his fault that he fell out of the sky. As it turns out, Fiery actually misses slapping Coiny after he got eliminated, so to take his mind off of it, he tries slapping Tennis Ball instead. In BFDI 19, Fiery somehow gets a hold of an emergency button that, when pressed, kills whoever is standing in front of the button. He uses it to kill Bubble. Fiery's usage of the button may have been the inciting event for Pencil going on a killing spree with the same button afterwards. Also in BFDI 19, Fiery climbs up onto the ledge in order to be safe, but unfortunately for him, David had also gotten there at the same time, causing Fiery to accidentally burn him alive. In BFDI 23, Fiery sits underneath where the announcer gets recovered and repeatedly burns him alive in the process. I think this can be counted as a mass murder charge. In BFDI A2, he accidentally catches Puffball on fire when he turns around to face her. I think I'll call this one an assault charge. In BFB 22, as revenge for Leafy stealing Dream Island, he stole Donut's diary, and then commits perjury on top of it by trying to blame her for stealing Donut's diary. Finally, all the way in BFB 30, when they're fighting over the BFDI in the bus, Fiery kicks the announcer to get the BFDI away from him, only to lose it again immediately after. Wow, the lack of Crime at 3 1 Season 1 really hammers home how irrelevant Fiery's been since BFDIA. Anyways, all of that together adds up to a total of 1 death penalty, 1 life sentence, 47 years in prison, and a fine of $25,000. Contestant 3, Flower from BFDI In the first episode, BFDI 1A, Flower asks Ice Cube if she's beautiful, but Ice Cube declines to say yes. In response, Flower gets mad and kicks Icy. Then, during the balance beam challenge, she complains that she needs more space, so she pushes the contestants immediately around her off of the balance beam. In BFDI 1B, while the teams are being chosen, she knocks down a racer to get him out of the way, so she can talk to Snowball instead. She tries to tell Snowball to kill Bubble, but Blocky volunteers to do it instead. And what's more, she cheers him on too. When, in BFDI 2, it's down to just her and Golf Ball to be eliminated, she threatens to crush the announcer with the announcer crusher that was somehow there the whole time 
the name of which implied that it was built to specifically crush the announcer. Kinda weird. Golf Ball is then revealed to be safe, and Flower attempts to crush the announcer, but instead, Golf Ball's position caused it to explode. In her rejoining screen in Episode 8, she threatens the viewers to vote for her, or else that she will crush them. She also threatens the announcer with the announcer crusher again during the rejoin, but she's flung away before she's able to trigger it because the announcer was ready this time. In her second audition to rejoin the game, in episode 20, she threatens the viewers again. During the vote reveal for the aforementioned rejoin, Flower threatens to stretch the people who voted for Coiny. She did end up rejoining the game though. She sent out another threat during the voting screen, this time to twist the people who voted for her to be eliminated. It obviously worked, since she only got bottom two the next episode. As a result of Fiery showing her a bug, and she hates bugs, she kills it with a hammer, and also destroys the bridge that the two of them are standing on in the process. Talk about overkill. The bridge breakage then resulted in a sequence of events that led to the death of the announcer, and I lay the blame on Flower because she greatly overreacted by using a hammer, especially with enough force to break a bridge. As a response to Fiery speaker bot saying that the TLC needs fixed, she threw a bowling ball at him and kills her own speaker box instead, though it's still a killing. She pushed Fiery and Leafy off the balance beam as the three of them crossed it in the FBI 23. This also resulted in Fiery's death as he hit the water. She then pushed Fiery towards the water again, this time catching Leafy ablaze as well as she tried to catch him, killing them both. Near the end of the sequence of challenges, she once again kills Fiery, this time by directly pouring a bucket of water onto him, followed by pushing Leafy into the lava. Like Fiery in the same episode, she repeatedly kills the announcer as he gets recovered, although she uses a hammer instead because she can't passively kill him. Upon hearing the news of BFDI being cancelled because the announcer is terrible with money, she throws a bunch of bug eggs at him in retaliation. After being let out of the TLC, Flower bites a chunk off of the announcer. For some reason, probably to hammer home Fiery's point that the TLC contestants had gone insane. Even though she'd only been back in there for one episode. Later in the same episode, she gets very angry and decides to destroy all of the recovery sensors because Bubble called her out for being so self-centered. She does this so that when she kills Bubble a little bit later, she is dead permanently, and by permanently I mean until Pencil and Match bring Bubble back during BFDIA. Speaking of BFDIA, in episode 4 of that season, Flower throws a syringe of poison at Gelatin as revenge for him freezing her earlier. However, he's immune to poison and just freezes her again. Now we get to move on to BFB, and I know that there's no way she would be able to carry out her threat, but she does threaten the crushed black hole in BFB1 if he doesn't open the jar for her. She issues another threat in BFB5 this time directed towards Ruby and because Ruby wouldn't call her beautiful, but when she curled up her arm, Ruby thought she was beautiful again. As she's climbing the stairs in BFB11, Flower pushes Bommy and Tennis Ball off the side of the stairs, along with using Pi to launch herself to the top of the stairs. In BFB13, Flower loses her balance and falls over a ledge onto Team Ice Cube, who was being held up by a struggling bubble, and she got popped as a result of it. At the start of BFB15, Flower shoves Gelatin into the lava, which kills him, just because he complains about there not being enough room on the patch of land they were stuck on together. At the end of the same episode, she shoves Naily into the ground, which causes Team Ice Cube to lose, 
I think this could easily be considered assault. In BFB 23, she hears from very far away that the Habcocks actually don't like her sweaters, despite them telling her that they did. So she launches herself along the tracks all the way to Yellowface's warehouse, where she then kicks them all in the face. As it turns out, her sweaters are made from materials that are derived from an endangered species, perhaps the funny plant from Teapot 4, which means she likely violated the Endangered Species Act and will be punished accordingly. When she's in the bottom two with Leafy in BFB 28, she threatens to fight a chunk out of the announcer again, but since she survives, he doesn't have anything to worry about. All of that together adds up to a total of 1 death penalty, 8 life sentences, 77 and a half years in prison, and a fine of $277,500. Way heftier than the other winner of BFDI. Thank you all for watching. Make sure to subscribe with notifications on for part 4 of BFB But There Is No Split Remastered.